esters. Esters make up a pretty sizable chunk of unit 2. And once you understand the basics, a lot of this chemistry should fall into place. So we need to begin by asking ourselves, what is an ester? And as you can see here, the recipe is simple. To make any ester, you always need a carboxylic acid and an alcohol. Let's take an example. Let's take a nice, simple carboxylic acid. Here's one that we know really well. Ethanoic acid, COOH, carboxylic acid. Ethanoic acid with its two carbon atoms. An alcohol. Now, this time it's advisable to draw the functional groups head to head. Because when these two substances react, it's the functional group on this molecule and the functional group on this molecule which are going to interact. So, it might be an idea to present it that way. What happens? What happens is when these two molecules join together, they lose water. You'll notice up here there's water. And the water is formed when each molecule makes a little sacrifice. The acid loses its OH and the alcohol is H and together we have H2O. So these are removed. And by removing the water, what remains joins together. So let's see what our ester looks like. What's left of the acid? Well, most of the acid is left. You have to realise that change is only minimal. There's what's left of the acid. You notice the acid had two oxygens and one of them is left. This, this very distinctive oxygen here. Then we come to the join, where one molecule ends and the next one begins. And then we have what's left of the alcohol. Again, most of the alcohol is there. We end up with what looks like a complicated molecule. It's not really. All that's happened is they've lost, lost, lost water as they join together. You have to be able to see where the acid ends and the alcohol begins. We could present it slightly differently. We could write it as CH3, COOH. We could write the alcohol like this, CH3OH. Once again, we have to realise that after loss of water, each molecule still has an oxygen atom. The alcohol still has its oxygen, and the acid still has its oxygen. When these join together, we end up with CH3CO, which is what's left of the acid. Then we come to the join, and then what remains of the alcohol. Then we have CH3COO. CH3, an acid and an alcohol joint. What about some names? Well, this acid was ethanoic acid. Ethanoic acid because it has two carbons based on ethane. This is methanol. It's called methanol because it's based on methane with one carbon. What's the ester? Well, ethanoic acid produces ethanoates. So this is an this is an ethanoid. This is methyl methyl ethanoid ethanoid. So we have to practice naming these esters. So this particular combination of ethanoic acid and methanol gives this particular ester. Let's take one that's slightly different for me. Let's take, for example, methanoic acid. Now, methanoic acid, as the name implies, we have only one carbon atom. There it's there, methanoic acid. Let's take a slightly unusual alcohol. Let's take an alcohol where the OH group is not on the end of a chain, but it be in the middle of a chain. How about this example? What about this alcohol here? What alcohol is this? Well, it has three carbon atoms, and the OH group is on the second carbon atom, so this alcohol is propan-2-ol, and it's going to react with what we said was methanoic acid. But this time, of course, we have to realize it's the interaction of these functional groups which matters. Same old story, we lose water, and when they lose water, they join together. 
And when they jump together, you'll end up with a structure something like this. The alcohol has hardly changed at all. The alcohol has only lost the hydrogen here. The acid has lost its OH. So we end up with a structure which looks something like that. There's what's left of the acid, and it's there. And this is what's left of the alcohol. Right there. The question is, what kind of reaction is going on here? This joining together of molecules by losing water is a condensation reaction and it looms large. You need to know what's meant by condensation. Condensation reaction it pops up time and again. A condensation reaction is when molecules join by losing water. Okay, so why condensation? Because they lose water. But there's a join together. You'll notice that this reaction is reversible. Some people call this esterification, this making an ester. Can be reversed. Some things we're concerned with making an ester. Other things we're concerned with breaking an ester. So what would the reverse process be? Well, if making the ester involves removing water, then it follows that the reverse process would involve adding water or replacing the water. So to go back the way, we need to add water. That would be a condensation reaction. A condensation reaction is going in this direction. The reverse process, the reverse process, which is all about adding water, and by adding water, breaking it apart, splitting it in two, would be called hydrolysis, hydrolysis, a hydrolysis reaction. Again, very common, very important. It literally means water breaking, hydrolysis. So there it is. Esters, we we'll crop up a great deal. An ester is made when a carboxylic acid and an alcohol join. When they join together, all that happens is we lose water. We call this losing to water and join it together, a condensation reaction. Watch out, if the OH group is not on the end of the carbon chain, we sometimes get a slightly tricky structure, but the principle is the same. And we need to know that esters can be made and esters can be broken. Condensation and hydrolysis.